out here to Sears Field in Marble Falls, where Liberty Hill will take on the Marble Falls Mustangs, looking to get back into the win column in their district campaign. I am Jason Hebner on the call tonight. Once again here in Sears Field in Marble Falls, we're about 10 minutes to first pitch. Jason Hebner on the call tonight. I was on the call last Tuesday night where Liberty Hill fell 13-0 against the Cedar Park Timberwolves at home. A tough game for Liberty Hill fans and a tough game to lose at home all the matter. Liberty Hill will look to get back in the win column tonight against the Mustangs. Mustangs come into this game 4-7 on the season, 0-3 in district play. So if there's a team you want to play in this district, Marble Falls is one of them for Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill looking to get to 2-2 two two in district play before having two home games next week, one against Leander on Tuesday and Georgetown on Friday night. Both of those teams, very solid district teams and would pose a threat for Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill needs to win this one to stay in that real, stay in the top of those district standings. Once again, we're about 10 minutes from first pitch here in Marble Falls, just awaiting the umpires and everyone to get ready. You probably are able to hear some music in the background. The uh, press box here in Marble Falls is doing a great job of keeping us pumped up, waiting for the game. Some notes here on uh, Marble Falls while we have some free time. Marble Falls comes into this game 0-3 in district play, like I said. Their losses are to Cedar Park, Georgetown, and Leander. Not an easy start to district for the Mustangs. So they're still winless in district. Liberty Hill looking to extend that streak for the Mustangs. But the Mustangs have something to play for. They're in their home turf here at Sears Field, a beautiful grass field in Central Texas. Marble Falls, uh, if you know anything about Marble Falls, press box and football you know you can see 20 to 30 miles in the hill country and we can a little bit here too in the baseball field a little elevated where Marble Falls High School sits we're looking out to the southeast um, where you're actually not able to see it on the camera because the way Marble Falls uh, Mustang baseball field is constructed you actually cannot get right behind the uh, home plate unless you're in the press box and of course as an away broadcast team we're not able to get in the press box or I'm not able to get in the press box solo team I guess so we're out here on the side we put the camera as far over as we can so hopefully it still works for y'all I'll be on the call as always but once again in Marble Falls tonight for a district 25 5A matchup between Liberty Hill and Marble Falls once again Marble Falls 0-3 in the district campaign a note moving into back into 4A next year the reclassifications came out in February and Marble Falls is going to fall back under that 4A line. So they'll be in the 4A district next year. Not exactly quite sure what that district is, but it's probably in the Burnett, you know, Burnett, Fredericksburg, those type of schools. And that's who they played with before they got bumped up to 5A four years ago. So they're a little out of their element here in 5A, and their success kind of shows that. We got about according to clock about five or six minutes before we get going underway. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back after the break. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 13 about yet another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to VipeVYPE.com. Yes. Yeah, for the end zone, touchdown Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vipe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vipe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vipe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vipe Sports. VYP. And welcome back here to Marble Falls after the quick spot commercial break. If you listened last week, I'm sorry. We have a, the same five to choose from currently. Uh, if you're a Booster Club member or 
someone of influence and you want to have your message read, reach out to me. I'd be happy to read it. We've got plenty of dead space here in between innings. You can reach out on the Twitter handle in the bottom left-hand corner, Hebner Jason. I post all the game links there. I'm able to communicate with anyone. So if you want to have your message read, just reach out to me on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to have it read here in the following district games. We got, you know, this is game four. We got ten more of them after this. So having the coaches meeting, you can see on your screen on the left-hand side, Coach Steven Hutcherson and Coach Tyler Porter for the Mustangs. Coach Porter, since he's the home coach, is describing some ground rules to the umpire crew and both head coach Steven Hutcherson for the Panthers. Hutcherson recently got his 250th win as a head coach. What an accomplishment for such a distinguished head coach. Fence is 320 left field, 320 in right field, 365 to center. Wind blowing kind of in. It was a hot day coming over here, 85, 86. But in the last couple of hours, it's kind of, or in the last hour or so that I've been here, it's kind of cooled off a little bit. You know, maybe 70, low 70s. Um, I'm in the shade, so that doesn't makes it a little cooler as well. But a lot of natural tree cover here in Marble Falls. Uh, High school and their facilities are real spaced out, so it makes it a real nice to come over here. It's just kind of a drive for Liberty Hill, farthest drive they have in their district ske schedule. About 45 minutes, if you take the uh, 1431 to 1174 to 1869 route. And we're going to go to the PA announcer for your starting lineups and national anthem. As soon as they start, I'll switch over to that. Nice crowd. Oh, we'll switch the PA. We'll be right back. A matchup between the Liberty Hill Panthers and your Mama Falls Mustangs. It's time to meet the starting lineup for tonight's game. For the visiting Panthers, leading off the designated hitter number 12, Logan Dyer. Batting second, the left fielder number three, Chase Maxwell. Batting third, the first baseman number 24, Cash Durkin. Batting fourth, the right fielder, number eight, Colby DeMars. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number 10, Cade Neuenschwander. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number 11, Trent Eller. Batting seventh, the center fielder, number seven, Jack Stavinda. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 28, Carson Riley. Batting ninth, the shortstop, number two, Garrett Neely. And the rest of the Panthers. The head coach is Steve Hutcherson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starters for the 2022 Marble Falls Mustangs. Playing right field, number three, Jet Sarita. Centerfield, number 13, Kale Cochran. Playing left field, number 14, John Samaripa. Playing second base, number 5, Bryce Atkinson. Playing shortstop, number 11, Jake Carter. Carter, our shortstop. Playing third base, number 22, Hudson McBride. Base number eight, Brady Obertowski. Behind the plate number four, Isaiah Roma. And on the mound number 12, Evan Nikowski. The Mustangs are led by head coach Tyler Porter. We now ask that you rise, gentlemen, remove your caps for the playing of the national anthem.
We are back after those starting lineups and the national anthem here at Sears Field in Marble Falls. Once again, leading off for the Panthers will be Logan Dyer, followed by Chase Maxwell and Cash Durkin. We'll go through the defense for the Mustangs. Shortstop, Jake Carter. Catcher, Isaiah Roman. Center fielder, Kale Cochran. Left fielder, Jan Zamoripa. Pitcher, Evan Nikowski. Second baseman, Bryce Atkinson. Third baseman, Hudson McBride. First baseman, Brady Ilwarkowski. DH is Kyle Curtis. And in right field, Jet Zarita. Nikowski, if I'm not mistaken, started for the Mustangs last year. Against the Panthers as well. And if I remember correctly, did not have too much success. Nikowski, number 12, has a big presence on the mound, tall and lean. And looks to be throwing the ball pretty hard. Something the Panthers are going to have to do this game that they did not do on Tuesday, if you were listening. They're going to have to warm up those bats. And hopefully the warmer temperatures help them do that. But no runs on only one hit on a Tuesday night against Cedar Park, and that's just not a recipe for success. Tonight looking to find the bats against Nikowski and get back in the win column. Nikowski about, should be of one more warm-up pitch after this, and then we'll get ready for the first pitch of the ball game. Once again, a, a wind blowing in from Pretty, pretty much dead center field. It's picked up here in the last hour or two. Went from a about 85-90 and absolutely scorching to about, about 75 and really gorgeous temperatures for a baseball game in middle of March. So Nikowski is ready. Dyer, the lefty, will step into the batter's box. Nikowski winds up first pitch. Fastball high. Dyer will watch it for ball one. Definitely throwing so throwing some heat, Nikowski. Once again, tall and lean frame, able to use that arm to his advantage. That looked like a breaking ball, called ball two. It's getting a little tough to distinguish fastballs and breaking balls out here, well, since we are on the side, if you miss that. Marble Falls uh, field does not allow us to sit behind the plate as Dyer hits that softly into center field. It and the center fielder, Kale Cochran, will come in and make the catch for out number one. Let me record that. I'm going to try to keep some stats this game so we know what everybody does in there at bats. So fly out to center field. Okay, now in the box, Chase Maxwell facing Nikowski for the first time tonight. First pitch curveball in there for strike number one on Maxwell. Nikowski winds up. Here's the second pitch. That one a little bit low, under his knees. Worked down to one and one. So one one count for Maxwell. A two hole hitter tonight. Pitch. That one popped up in the infield. Second baseman calls it. And the second baseman, Bryce Atkinson, able to make the catch for out number two. So that's a pop out for Maxwell. And he'll bring up Cash Durkin. So two quick outs for Nikowski. Maxwell, or now Durkin in the box looking to get on base. First pitch to Durkin. Fastball swung through by Durkin. Durkin, the senior first baseman, committed to Blinn College in Burnham to continue his baseball career. Here's Nikowski. Another fastball swung through by Durkin. 0-2 count, and Nikowski looks to be bringing his stuff. Could be a reason they held Cedar Park to only one run, just unable to put up any of their own in their first district game of the season. That fastball is high, so that will be a 1-2 count. Mustangs may have brought out their star pitcher to face the Panthers. Nikowski winds up, delivers. 
That one hit up the middle by Durkin, and he'll be on with a single. Good piece of hitting by Durkin. Hit it right back up the middle. And that'll be a single for Durkin. So the single by Durkin, a two-out single, I should say, brings out number eight, Colby DeMars, to the batter's box. Cleanup hitter. If you uh, were listening or at the Tuesday game, same lineup so far. First pitch to DeMars. Fastball inside. Mikowski working from the stretch now with the runner on base. Durkin taking his lead on first. They'll check him. Durkin back in time. The first baseman, uh, Wardkowski, a little trouble in that. Hit off his glove, fell to the ground, but Dur Dur uh, Durkin not able to advance. So 1 0 count for DeMar's pitch. That pitch is inside. Works count to 2 0. So a 2-0 count for DeMars with a runner on first base in Durkin. Two outs here in the top of the first. They'll check Durkin. Overthrow to first base. Durkin is going to advance to second pretty easily. Big wide field here in Marble Falls. So now a runner in scoring position for DeMars. Both of Nikowski's throws over to first so far have been high, and his first baseman is unable to. That one was uncatchable. The first one unable to cleanly catch. So now Durkin at second base after the error air there. And DeMar's looking to drive in a run, put the Panthers on the scoreboard. Pitch. That fastball's high. Nikowski seems to be maybe a little flustered now. So 3-0 for DeMar's. It's hard to imagine with two outs he has the, uh, has the signal he can swing. So I'm, I put my money he, doesn't, he watches this one. Nikowski checks his runner pitch. Watches that curveball in the dirt. And DeMars will advance to first base. Runners on first and second for the Panthers. Having a little two-out rally here. So DeMars on first base after the walk. Third baseman, Kate Neunschwander. It's Durkin on second after his single. And now on the plate, Kate Neunschwander, the third baseman. First pitch, swinging. That ball is into right field. It'll be down. Durkin being sent home. Play at the plate. Durkin's going to be safe. DeMars to third. And Noonschwander into second. So an RBI double for Noonschwander. And that will push the lead to 1-0 to for the Panthers. First pitch swinging. Noonschwander took the fastball into right field. Good piece of running by Durkin and DeMars, and Noonschwander for that matter. So now Noonschwander at second, DeMars at third. In the box, Trent Eller, the senior. First pitch fastball in there for strike number one. So 0-1 to Eller. Pitch. Curveball, he held it back. A little check swing from Eller there. So 1-1 one, one now. So 1-1 one, one for Eller, looking with two runners in scoring position, looking looking to drive him in. Nikowski set, pitch to the plate. High fastball in there for strike number two. So now a 1-2 count for Eller, facing Nikowski for the first time tonight. pitch. Fastball swung through by Eller, and now will be out number three, but not before the Panthers take one to take the lead. We'll head to the bottom of the first here in Marble Falls. I'm Jason Heemner. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Welcome back here to Marble Falls in Sears Field. 
where the Panthers are taking the field here in the bottom of the first inning after taking the lead on an RBI double from Cade Nunschwander. Cole Jefferson gets a starting nod tonight and he'll look to have a little more success than he did last Tuesday against Cedar Park. Granted, no one really had success against Cedar Park on the mound for Liberty Hill. So we'll go through the defense for the Panthers. In left field, we have Chase Maxwell, the junior. Center field, Jack Stavanoa, center fielder. Right field, Colby DeMars. At third base, we got Cade Noonschwander. Shortstop, Garrett Neely. Second base, the senior, Trent Eller. First base, Cash Durkin. Behind the plate, we got Carson Riley. And on the mound, Cole Jefferson. Jefferson committed to play baseball at John Hopkins University. It's a D3 university. D3 Collegiate, or an athletic university, I should say. One of the top medical schools in all the country. Cole Jefferson attending there to be potentially become a surgeon, I believe. So a smart man on and off the field. Carson Riley, good throw down to second base. And we're Panthers are ready to go here. Jefferson will face will face Jake Carter, the shortstop, to lead off the inning. The bottom half of the inning, I should say. So Jefferson will work from the stretch facing Carter. Or wind up, excuse me. First pitch. Fastball. Little low. Will be ball one. So 1 0 for Carter in there facing Jefferson. Pitch. That fastball in the same spot as the last one called a strike. Worth count to 1 and 1. Jefferson winds up, delivers. Curveball. Fooled Carter. 1 2. That was about a 10 mile an hour, 10 to 15 mile an hour speed differential there, and Carter way out early. Jefferson now. Pitch. Curveball again. I'll get Carter will Carson Riley will stop it. He'll throw it on first base. And they'll have the out on the drop third strike. So strike out for Carter. And the first strike out of the game for Cole Jefferson. So the strikeout of Carter by Jefferson will bring up the catcher, Isaiah Roman. A Roman. Jefferson taking a sign from Carson Riley, the junior catcher. Pitch. Fastball. Bounces on the plate for ball number one. So 1 0 count for Roman. Jefferson winds up, delivers. That fastball fouled straight back. Jefferson will pick up that same ball and use it. Oh, never mind. Sided against it. So a 1 1 count now. One out here in the bottom of the first. It's getting a little windy here, so I apologize for any. So how difficult it is to maybe view the game. Pitch from Jefferson here. Fastball chased by Roman. The uh, combination of usual wind and the uh, the netting that they have for safety for the stand for the for the, the fans here in these baseball stadiums usually makes it pretty hard to watch, unless you have a designed like camera place, and not many do. Well, while I was going on a little tangent, Roman hit in the back by a Cole Jefferson curveball, so he'll jog down to first, and there'll be a runner on for the Mustangs. So now Jefferson working from the stretch with Roman on first base. First pitch to now Kale Cochran. First pitch fastball in there for strike number one. Kale Cochran, the center fielder, senior I do believe, was a starter last year on this Mustang team. Pitch. That one grounded at Noonschwander. He'll go to second base, and he'll go to first, Eller. At first, he'll be Cochran will be safe. But a good play from Noonschwander to go to second to Eller. So we'll have a 6-4 to four ground out. Or a 5-4 to four ground out, excuse me. Or a fielder's choice, technically, because Cochran did uh, reach base. So a 5-4 to four fielder's choice for Cochran. So that'll be two outs now. And at the plate will be the left fielder, Jan Zamaripa. 
Could be John. I can't read my own handwriting. Runner's going. Cochran's going. Throw from Riley way high into center field. Stavanoa there to back it up to limit any to limit any errors there. But that one just way high from Riley there. So now Mustangs do have a runner in scoring position with Zamaripa at the plate. Cole adjusting his uh, maybe his sign sleeve there. Back on the mound now. He's taking a sign from Riley. Working from stretch. He's now set. His pitch. Fastball. Little low. Work to count to 2-0 and now for Zamaripa. Jefferson. Checking his runner. Now to the plate. Allen popped out of play into the parking lot. Heads up. Could have hit a car there. It's a parking lot's not very far from the field here in Marl Falls. You know, I do enjoy that because it's less of a walk for me, but for some of these baseball fans and baseballs and cards, sometimes not the best combination. So 2-1 now for Zamaripa. Pitch from Jefferson. Curveball. Kind of like a slider, actually. Because he has a 12-6 curve, and that one almost looks like a slider. Maybe a changeup, even. So 2-2 two -two pitch. Definitely off speed. So now it's 2-2 two -two for Zamaripa. Jefferson looking to get out of this inning. Jefferson set the pitch. That's the big curveball. That one is watched by Zamaripa. So now a full count. Jefferson takes his sign from the dugout. Checks Cochran at second base. Pitch. Fastball grounded. Foul down the third baseline. About six inches foul there from Zamaripa. Could have hit the third base bag. That would have been trouble for the Panthers. But it is foul. So full count. Jefferson trying to get the Panthers back to the plates. So now Jefferson set. Full count for Zamaripa. The pitch. Out pitch in the dirt will be ball four. Now the Mustangs runners on first and second for their five hole hitter, the pitcher, Evan Nikowski. So pitcher on pitcher matchup. Pitcher on pitcher matchup as Zamaripa was walked. So Jefferson here, pitch, first pitch to Nikowski. Nikowski laid on that one, strike at number one. 0-1 oh, count for Nikowski. Jefferson set. Pitch, another fastball, swung through by Nikowski. I'd like to see another fastball here, personally. As a pitcher, I think you'd be expecting something breaking ball. I don't know, just some thoughts. 0-2 count for Nikowski. Jefferson here. Fastball. Pops back into the parking lot. Heads up. Ted right at a car. Oh, hit the tree. The tree saved that one. That's about three cars to the left of mine, so you know, I gotta watch those sometimes. We would like to drive home with a windshield. Now Jefferson, 0-2 count for Nikowski. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Fouled weakly by Nikowski at the plate. About an inch from striking him out there. Nikowski just got the end of his barrel on that one. So once again for the Mustangs, runners on first and second. Cochran on second. Zamaripa on first. Nikowski at the plate. Jefferson on the mound for the Panthers looking to get out number three here. Jefferson the pitch. Fastball swung on by Nikowski for out number three. Two strikeouts in the first inning for Jefferson. <laughs> Keeps the Mustangs scoreless and will head to the top half of the second inning. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball. I'm Jason Hebner.
Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Welcome back here to Sears Field in Marble Falls, where the Panthers are leading 1-0 on the Marble Falls Mustangs. And one run scored on by an RBI double from Cade Noonschwander. In the top half of the inning, Liberty Hill will look to extend their lead here in the top half of the second. Sorry, someone's are playing volleyball out here. It's kind of confusing me, throwing me off. Leading off the inning for the Panthers here will be Stavanoa, Jack Stavanoa, then Carson Riley, then Garrett Neely, and then we'll get to the top of the order. Mikowski back on the mound for the Mustangs. Here are the Mustangs. You'd like to see him go as far as he can in this one. Maybe calm down a little bit. Find his groove here. Here Liberty Hill. Keeps in on that fastball. Keep driving it. Hard hit balls from Durkin and Nunchwander on that fastball. Leads to success. What we liked in that bomb half inning with Jefferson, we need Liberty Hill, one of my keys I wrote down to this game was for Liberty Hill to establish a mound presence because against Cedar Park uh, on Tuesday, they used about five or six different pitchers that never really just established themselves. They do look, Jefferson looked good in the first, and we'll hope he can continue that as the game goes on. Looks like we're about to ready to uh, lead off the second inning here. And Jack Stavanoa will step into the plate. First pitch from Nikowski. Shows a bunt. He'll be foul. Stavanoa looking to catch the third baseman McBride sleeping maybe. But just didn't, just didn't get it down correctly. So we'll have an 0-1 count now. Good to see Stavanoa feeling better. Missed the last game because he was sick. So good to see him back in a lineup as that one is high. Fourth count to one and one. So one one count for Stavanoa leading off the top of the second inning. That fastball swung through by Stavanoa. Will work the count to one and two. Nikowski working from the windup. Takes his sign here in his catcher, Roman. Here's the pitch. That one, fastball in the dirt. Works count to two and two. Getting a good view of Carson Riley right now in the on-deck circle. On your screens. Everyone chooses a different spot for it, unfortunately. His is a little further than everybody else's, right? <laughs> Here's a pitch from Nikowski. That's a fastball. And they'll strike him out on that one. A little, not very visual at home plate, so that'll be the second strikeout for Nikowski. Let me write down a backwards K for you. Went out looking. Carson Riley. A little baseball factoid for you. If you ever see a K backwards, it means he went out looking. Here's the first pitch to uh, Carson Riley. Is a ball. So one out count for Riley, looking to. Start the Panthers off here in the second inning. Pitch from Nikowski. That one hit between shortstop and third base. Shortstop has it. He makes a throw over. Riley will beat it out anyways. It gets by the first baseman, but Riley not really paying attention. He'll have to stay at first. Not a great throw there from Carter. We hit ground ball got by McBride, and usually the runner's going to beat him out there. Usually going to beat them out. First base, number 32, Colton Rutherford. So we'll have a courtesy runner for Riley, and it's Colton Rutherford. At the plate, and now at the plate will be Carson or er, Garrett Neely, excuse me. Shortstop, senior shortstop, going to UT Dallas. And then in the fall, Nikowski working from the stretch. First pitch to Neely. 
Fastball swung on, fouled back into the wall. And now we'll roll back into the playing field. McBur or Nikowski content to use that one. Nope. Catcher doesn't want him to. Oh. Threw it and hit Neely in the face. It's kind of a weird thing. Nikowski threw the uh, threw the ball back to the catcher. Roman missed it. Hit Neely smack on the nose. Neely seems to be in good spirits though. So now Rutherford on first. Running for Riley. They'll pick him. He's back. Nikowski again threw it high. And Rutherford will be at least a first to second. So he'll advance to second. So we've seen three pickoffs this game. All the first. All of them have been thrown high. Two of them completely overthrown. So now a runner in scoring position for Neely. Looking to score again here in the top of the second. Mikowski set. Checks Rutherford. Goes. That one popped on, on the infield. First baseman seems to be under it. And he will make the catch. That was Iwarkowski on the catch. For out number two. So now two outs. Logan Dyer will head back to the batter's box in his second at bat. First at bat flew out to center field. Nikowski set, and he'll check his runner. Rutherford back to the bag. So two outs here in the top of the second. Runner in scoring position for Liberty Hill. First pitch to Dyer, hit to first base. Iwarkowski not able to get there. Dyer beat it out, I think. <laughs> Dyer did indeed beat it out. Sorry, the, uh, home, the field umpire is a little far away over there. Couldn't really see him all in the same frame. But Iwarkowski bobbled that ball a little bit. Dyer running hard, runs fast. I mean, running back in football. Able to get to first base pretty easily there. Beat him by a step. So now runners on the corners for the Panthers. And now in the batter's box, Chase Maxwell. First pitch to Maxwell. Hit weakly into shallow left field. The shortstop Carter under it. Able to make the catch for out number three. So I'll record these stats. And we'll be right back. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Welcome back here to Sears Field in Marble Falls where your Panthers are leading 1-0 entering the bottom of the second inning against the Marble Falls Mustangs. While we have a minute, we'd like to show our support for the women's girls soccer team of Liberty Hill playing in the first round of the Bay District playoffs. They're playing tonight 7.30 p.m. versus Alamo Heights at Hayes High School. Good luck, ladies. So now in the bottom of the second, Jefferson back on the mound for the Panthers. Looking to have the same success he had in the first inning. Leading off for the Mustangs looks to be the second baseman, Bryce Atkinson. Jefferson from the windup. First pitch. Fastball. A little high at the letters. Some call it, some don't. 1-0 count now for Atkinson. Second pitch. Fastball swung through by the second baseman. So 1-1 one, one count. Jefferson winds up, delivers. That one fouled back into the parking lot again. Hit the same tree the last one hit. So now a 1-2 count for Atkinson. Jefferson looking to retire the first battery faces this inning. As that fastball is high, works count to two and two. So a 2-2 two -two count for Atkinson. Jefferson trying to retire him with this one. Pitch. 
Curveball chased by Atkinson, and now be out number one. The third strikeout for Jefferson comes on a nice curveball, perfectly placed in the dirt where Atkinson chased it. So now one out in the bottom half of the second inning. We'll bring up third baseman Hudson McBride. There's a little there's a ball and some ball got thrown back to Riley from the Marl Falls dugout. And don't believe it was a good throw back to Riley. So we got that cleared up. We're ready. Jefferson ready to face McBride. Winds up, delivers first pitch to McBride. Must have just missed. Ball number one. I'll say it looked good from the side. Must have been off the plate a little bit. Here's the second one. That one inside. So now 2-0 for Jefferson. Jefferson worked a little fast there. Maybe needed to take a take a minute. Here's the pitch. That one inside. McBride 3-0 early. Three fastballs out of the zone. Works McBride's at 3-0 count. One out here in the bottom half of the inning. Here we go. 3-0 pitch. That's also a ball. And now McBride will walk down to second base. Or first base. <laughs> Sorry. Trying to do too much at one time here. So one out. The first baseman, Brady Elortkowski, a lefty hitter. Steps into the box. Runner on first base is McBride. First pitch fastball. Swinging, fouls it down into the dirt. Maybe off his front foot for strike one. Yeah, the way he's reacting must have been off his front foot. But he seems to be just fine. He steps back into the batter's box. So 0-1 count for Ewart Tukowski. Jefferson set. Here's the pitch. That one swung through. Kind of looks like a changeup. So now an 0-2 count. Jefferson looking to retire E. Lortkowski with this one. Pitch. Fastball. Just off the plate. So 1-2 count for the batter. McBride on first base. Jefferson checks him a little bit. Delivers to the plate. That one hit hard. Foul. Down the first baseline. He'll Liberty Hill will have to send someone after it. So, Edwardkowski staying alive here. A 1 2 count. One out here in the bottom half of the second. That curveball misses. I mean, big miss. McBride advances to second. Marble Falls student section that's slowly forming is appreciated McBride's effort there. So 2-2 two, two count for E. Wartkowski, the batter. Jefferson will step off. Got to check his signs now that there's a runner on second. Change him up. So he's taking a sign from Riley now. Jefferson is. S steps off. So a 2-2 two, two count. One out here. Jefferson checks McBride, goes to the plate. That fastball hit into right field deep. DeMar's going back. It's going to one-hop the wall. DeMar's able to feel it cleanly, get it into second base. McBride, not a good read on that one, so he'll be stuck at third. So after a double from Elortkowski and a walk of McBride, the batter before, Mustangs will have two in scoring position. Only one out. Pitching coach Kyle Bisher is going to go out and talk to his his pitcher. Seems to be kind of a maybe a mix-up in signs or something of that matter. So they're going to go sort this out. He's going to go calm them down. Jefferson will be could is able to get out of this if he can just calm down and find the strike zone. Didn't want you to 
home plate umpire said he's let's get the get the road on. So Coach Fisher will head back to the dugout. Once again, a Wart Elort Kowski on second base. McBride on third. Now at the plate will be the the designated hitter, Kyle Curtis, with two runners in scoring position. Jefferson first pitch to Curtis. Fastball in there for strike number one. That's what you love to see if you're a coach. You go out and talk to your pitcher. You want to respond with a first pitch fastball. Jefferson set. 0-1 count for Curtis. Second pitch. Good, good stop there by Riley. And a fastball in the dirt. Works count to 1-1. One one. One, one count. Here's the pitch. That one's a little low as well. 2-1 for Jefferson. Liberty Hill hanging on to a 1-0 lead here in the second inning. Mar the Mustangs looking to cause some trouble right now. Runners, two runners in scoring position. Curtis at the plate. Jefferson set, delivers. That one hit hard up the middle. One run will score. Edwardkowski being waved around. S never mind, he's hold, held up. So one run will score on the RBI single from Curtis. And I'll tie this ball game at one. Good piece of hitting by Curtis. Just took that fastball straight up the middle. Now, runners on the corners for the leadoff hitter, Jake Carter. Carter in his last at bat struck out. Jefferson could use another one of those right here. First pitch to Carter. In there for strike one. So now we have Curtis on first base, E. Lortkowski on third, Carter at the plate. Jefferson on the mound for Liberty Hill. That pitch, a little off the plate, works count to one and one. So one one count. Jefferson set the pitch. Ball two on that change up at the pier. Wind's starting to blow a little bit more. Blowing in. So that fastball is in there for strike number two. It's a 2-2 two -two count. Wind blowing in from center field. So any fly balls should stay in the ball in the ball in the I don't even know what I was trying to say. Here's a pitch from Jefferson. 2-2 two -two count. Curveball. A little bit off the plate. Work the count to full. In the ballpark, not the ball yard. That's what I was trying to say. So full count here. Pitch, fastball, hit to first base. Through the hole by Dirk and Ewardkowski will score. Curtis will be held at second. And Carter with a nut with a back-to-back -back RBI single for the Mustangs and they take the lead. So now, the Mustangs lead this ball game two to one. Runners on first and second with Isaiah Roman heading to the plate. A two hole hitter and the catcher, senior. Roman looking to continue this little rally here. Hit by pitch in his last at bat. They'll check the runner at second base. They're going to get him. Oh. It was close. Jefferson threw that ball a little bit behind the runner, not straight to the bag. If it would have been to the bag, I think Car or Curtis would have been out pretty easily. Pitch here. First pitch fastball in there for strike one. Once again, Liberty Hill gonna have to establish a mound presence if presence if they're gonna win district ball games. Failed to do so on Tuesday night, and we saw what that caused. Runners on first and second for the Mustangs. Here's the pitch from Jefferson. Curveball. Strike two. Good sequence there from Jefferson. First pitch fastball and a curveball. Early 0-2 count 
It'll be interesting to see what he does here. Does he keep the breaking ball or does he try to throw the high heat, make Ramon chase? Jefferson set, checks Curtis at second. Goes to the plate. That one in the dirt. Good stop by Riley. Okay. Rom so Ramon called time there. So that pitch actually didn't count, so it's still an 0-2 count. Ramon called time right as Jefferson was starting, and the home plate umpire granted it. So 0 2 still. Jefferson. Pitch. Fastball. Low. Roman watches it. Worked the count to 1 and 2. So one out. Here's the pitch. That one hit deep into left field. Left fielder Maxwell going back. That ball's going to one-hop the wall. One run will score. One run will score as Roman hit that ball almost over the wall. So that will push the lead to three to nothing. And the Mustangs are they're finding their rhythm right now. So Roman, the third consecutive RBI single for the Mustangs, and they've taken the lead here in the bottom of the second. Now Roman on first, Carter at second, in the plate, Kale Cochran. First pitch fastball to Cochran, inside for ball one. This inning seems to be just taking forever. It's almost 40 minutes in and we're in the bottom of the second. Jefferson checking his runner. They're going to go. They're going to be close. Runner able to get back. That runner is Carter. That was a designed uh, designed pick play there. Neely knew the, knew the call. And he was going towards the bag before Jefferson started to throw him. So Jefferson set. Pitch. Cochran swung through that fastball. Called it tipped, but doesn't matter. 1-1 one, one count. So 1-1 one, one for Cochran in the batter's box. Jefferson trying to get Liberty Hill out of this inning. Pitch. Fastball. In there. Strike number two. So one, two, count. Cochran. Cochran will run around first and second, looking to extend the lead for the Mustangs. Jefferson and the Panthers trying to limit the damage. They're going to call a pick play there. That time, Eller took the throw. Some some good designs here for Liberty Hill, but Carter staying, staying alert out there, able to get back both times. Should be able to just see that on your screen, actually. So here's the pitch from Jefferson. Curveball. Ball two. Could have gone either way, it seems. So now a 2-2 count for Cochran. Jefferson trying to get the second out of this inning. Here's the pitch. That fastball hit back into the parking lot. That one avoided any cars, though. So 2-2 two, two for Cochran. Long at bat here. Jefferson takes his sign from Riley. Now set. Now checks Carter. Now back to the plate. Here's the pitch. Fastball. Swung through by Car Cochran. Excuse me. For out number two. Fourth strikeout of the night for Jefferson. And now there's two outs here in the bottom of the second. Liberty Hill looking for one more to escape some serious damage. So now in the batter's box is Jan Zamaripa. He walked last his last at bat. 
That's a fastball in there for strike number one. So we got 0-1 for Zamaripa. Jefferson checks Carter at second. Goes to the plate. Fastball. Hit out into the parking lot here. So that's two strikes now. So 0-2 count to Zamaripa. Jefferson looking to retire him on this pitch. Get Liberty Hill back to the plate where they'll look to take the lead in the third. Pitch. Curveball. In there for strike number three. Good last two batters for Jefferson to get out of the inning. And we'll head to the top of the third where Liberty Hill will look to take the lead back. I'm Jason Hebner, and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Welcome back here to Searsfield in Marble Falls. The Panthers down currently 3-1 to one after the Mustangs scored three in the second inning. Liberty Hill going to have to get the bats going if they want to win this ball game. Back on the mound for the third inning is, is Evan Nikowski. I touched on this in the first inning. Real tall and lean frame. When he throws a fastball, it, it's pretty hard. I mean, it's, I, you know, I, for my rough estimations, I'd say maybe 85, 86. Don't quote me on that, but you know, he's a hard, one of the harder throwers you see out here in some of these schools, and he's done a good job of keeping the Panthers in check through too. Really, only that one mistake on the RBI double from Nunchwander in the first inning. And after that, he's really calmed down. Like, uh, for instance, last exa last inning, a uh, pop out, a another pop out, and a strikeout, and he was he was out of there. So leading off for here for the top of the third for Liberty Hill will be Cash Durkin in his second at bat, his first at bat. He singled up the middle, and on that one, he's going to hit into left center field. That'll be down for another leadoff single. Good piece of hitting by Durkin. There's a reason he's going to Blinn College to continue his career. So two singles in the game for Durkin. And now Colby DeMars will be in the batter's box. DeMars, his last at bat, walked. He'll look to reach base again. The right fielder, Colby DeMars. So Colby facing Mikowski. Here's the pitch. Oh, fastball high and inside. Just missed him. So 1 0 count for DeMars. Nikowski set, working from the stretch with Durkin on first. That fastball's high, so that'll be 2 0. Nikowski has been a little flustered with runners on base through these first two, so it's always it's good for Liberty Hill to uh, get Durkin on there on the leadoff batter. Nikowski checks Durkin. Now he's set. He'll go to the plate. DeMars' fastball swung through. Works the count to 2 1. DeMars takes a sign from his head coach and third base coach, Coach Hutcherson. Mikowski set. Here's the pitch. That one in the dirt. Good job by Roman behind the plate to keep it in front of him. Works the count to 3-1. and 3-1 so count. For DeMars, the cleanup hitter for the Panthers. 
Nikowski set. He now delivers. That fastball. That'll find the zone. Work it to full. So full count for DeMars. Looking to reach base for the second consecutive at bat. Then be the second consecutive batter to do so as well. So full count for DeMars. Nikowski on the mound. Here in the top of the third. Pitch. That one hit hard down the left field line. It'll be just foul. A little hooking shot down the left field line. Would have been trouble. Durkin had a great jump on it. Would have likely scored, but about oh, eight feet, six or eight feet to the left of that foul line out there in deep left field. Good piece of contact. DeMar's looking to do it again here. Just put it in play. So Durkin on first base for the Panthers after a leadoff single. DeMar's at the plate now, facing Nikowski. Full count, pitch, Durkin goes. Hit weakly to third base, McBride. McBride bobbles it, and DeMar's will reach on an air. Durkin at second, DeMar's reached first on the air. So now two runners on for Liberty Hill. With no outs here in the top of the third, it'll bring up Cade Noonschwander to the plate. Noonschwander, the big RBI double in the first inning. So he'll look to have some same success off Nikowski. First pitch fastball last time. Be interesting to see what he does here. First pitch fastball. Noonschwander showed bunt. But he'll pull it back for ball number one. Don't believe that's a fastball. I think it was a curveball. I don't know why I said fastball. So 1-0 count. Nikowski set. Noonschwander will probably show bunt again here. Looking to advance his runners. He does. He puts that on the ground. Right back to Nikowski. Both runners will advance, and I think Nuchwander is safe at first. He is. Bad throw from Nikowski. So now the bases are loaded for the Panthers, and Nikowski cannot figure out the throw at first. Just, I mean, he's had two overthrows. That one's off the bag. And now I think his – looks like his pitching coach, I'm not sure the name, will come out and talk to him as Liberty Hill has the bases loaded with no outs here in the top of the third. So the base is loaded for Liberty Hill after they lead off single by Durkin and two consecutive reached on an error for DeMars and Noonschwander. Good job by Noonschwander there to still run it out even though it's just a bunt back to the pitcher. Got to come in the effort and that's the reason he's at first now. So the base is loaded now. The bases are loaded now, excuse me, for Trent Eller, the senior second baseman. Eller looking to drive in some runs, put the Panthers back on the scoreboard, Same potentially take the lead here. If I'm not mistaken, Eller has a grand slam on the season in one of the tournament games. Not quite sure which one or when, but here we go. First pitch to Eller. Fastball, strike one. I think I saw it on his Twitter highlights. And speaking about Twitter, bottom left-hand corner, Heemner Jason on Twitter. Follow me there for all your game links and updates if you need them. First pitch from, or second pitch from Nikowski. Grounded up the middle. Nikowski bobbles it. One run will score. Eller's going to reach first. And on an RBI single from Eller, the Panthers have scored. So now, 3-2 to two ball game. So all you have to do is put in play and you have a chance. And Eller hit that ball right back at Nikowski. Hit out of his glove. Able to score is Durkin. And now Eller on first. Noonschwander on second. DeMars on third for the senior, Jack Stavanoa. Stavanoa going to Texas A&M Texarkana in the fall to continue his baseball career as his first pitch was a curveball, or, yeah, curveball in there for strike one. It's 0-1 count for Stavanoa. Nikowski going a little faster than I can talk. That fastball is low for ball number one. So 1-1 one one count. Carson Riley again right in front of your camera there. Apologize about that if anything happens here. So base is loaded. Here's the pitch from Nikowski. That one's in the dirt. Good stop by Roman to keep it in front of him. And now work the count to two and one. Nikowski visibly flustered here, but already had his mound visit. The Mustangs have already had one mound visit. If they go another, they'll have to replace him. Nikowski set. Here's a two one pitch. That is a ball inside. Works the count to three and one. 
and Nikowski's here at risk of walking a run in. As a pitcher, that's the worst thing you can do is have bases loaded and walk a run in. Just like giving out free cookies. Here's the pitch. That one's in the... And Nikowski, to continue my now, you just gave up a free cookie. That's a 3-3 count. Or a 3-3 ball game, excuse me. After Stavanoa's, you know, RBI walk. One of the uh, rarer stats in baseball. Not the rarest, but one of the rare. Stavanoa gets an RBI there just for being in the right place at the right time. So 3-3 ball game now, tied up again. And here's Carson Riley with the bases loaded. First pitch to Riley. That's a high fastball. 1-0 count. Nikowski flustered. And you look into the Marl Falls dugout in there. They're considering making a change. Just, you, know, you don't know when. You never know when to stick with a guy or when it's time to fully go. But with zero out here in the top of the third, it may be time to get Nikowski out of there. That pitch is low as well. Works the count to 2-0. and oh. So a 2-0 count for Riley with the bases loaded. We got Stavanoa on first, Elwer on second, and Noonschwander on third. Riley at the plate, Nikowski 2-0 pitch. Fastball swung through by Riley, works it to 2-1. and one. Probably could have watched that one. Probably would have been ball three. But side swing, works the count to 2-1. and one. Nikowski set, 2-1 pitch. That's curveball in the dirt, and now he's in... He's in the hole of, or in the, has a possibility of giving away another free cookie. So 3-1 count to Riley. Here's the pitch from Nikowski. Fastball. Right down the middle for strike number two. Nikowski rearing back a little bit now. Some of these fastballs are, could be his top of the game if we had radar on it. Riley lasts for time here. So full count, bases loaded. Carson Riley at the plate for Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill no out here in the top of the third, looking to take the lead here against the Mustangs. Nakowski, full count, pitch. Hit into right field, that's gonna drop. That's gonna be one run will score. Noon Schwanders across the plate easily. Eller being held at third base. So Liberty Hill will take the lead on an RBI single from Carson Riley. Good piece of hitting, taking that fastball. Seeing taking that fastball into right field, and Liberty Hill now leads four to three. Still, the base is loaded. Bases are still loaded for Garrett Neely, the nine-hole hitter. In the ball, popped out his first at bat. Bases loaded here for him. Nikowski first pitch to Neely. Fastball inside for ball number one. Neely will join Eller at UT Dallas in the fall. Both following their or continuing their playing careers at, at the D3 school. Here's a pitch from Nikowski. That one popped up in the infield just about the same as his first time. First baseman, Ewart Kowski, able to make the catch for out number one. Just about the same spot as his first at bat. But now we'll have Logan Dyer, the leadoff hitter, back in the box for the third time. First at bat flew at center field. The last one he reached on an error. He's got three runners on right now. Would be nice to extend the lead here for the Panthers. First pitch swinging into left field. That ball's going to get down. One run will score easy. They're going to send Stavanoa. Stavanoa at in the plate. That will be two runs for Liberty Hill on the two RBI single by Logan Dyer. Stavanoa, one of the fastest kids out there. He was sent immediately by Coach Hutcherson as the left fielder kind of bobbled the ball. That would have been Zamoripa. And now the Panthers are up 6-3 to three after putting a five-piece now in the top of the third inning. You're enjoying this performance right now after you were at the Tuesday night game or you were watching when they just failed to put the ball in play, and they're doing a great job right now. Runners on first and second now for Maxwell as he tried to bunt that one, unable to for strike one. Two pop outs so far for Maxwell. Facing Kowski for the third time. That one hit hard up the middle. And looks like we're going to send Rutherford running for Riley. And he'll score easily. Dyer will advance the third on the RBI single from Maxwell. And he'll push the lead to four.
RBI single there for Maxwell. That gets three RBI sing three RBI singles in the inning for the Panthers. And they're rolling right now. Only one out here in the top of the third. Still facing Nikowski. And Durkin will be at plate with runners on the corners. First pitch. Fastball. Popped up out of play. Yeah, out of play. Down the left field line near the light pole. I got to mention this the last time I saw Durkin play out here in Marble Falls. He did hit a home run right over the scoreboard. <laughs> We'd love to see that right here as well. Probably won't happen now because I said that, but I apologize. Runners on the corners for Durkin. One out here facing Nikowski. That one's low in the dirt. Roman stops it, keeps it in front of him. Works the count to one and one. Panthers na now up four, seven. Seven to three. They don't have the runs like lit up on the scoreboard. It's kind of strange. That curveball's away for ball two. Like they have the inning by inning runs uh, lit up, but they don't have the total runs lit up. Sort of confusing. But still, Panthers up seven to three in this one. Luckily, you have a much easier to read scoreboard in your bottom left hand corner of your screen. Mikowski will check his. Third runner, then he'll do his little thing where he checks Maxwell at first. They're both on the base. They're fine. So runners on the corners for Durkin. 2-1 count. Here's the pitch. That one inside for ball three. And Nikowski just struggling. There's some action in the Mustang bullpen. Looks like that would be the DH Kyle Curtis throwing in the Mustang bullpen. We'll see if we see him here if the Panthers continue this offensive onslaught. Here's the pitch for Durkin. That one fouled back into the trees. So full count for Durkin now. One out in the top of the third inning. Like I touched on earlier, this game, we could be here until 930 at this current pace of play. We're through we're through two in the top of the third. Um, and it's been about just over an hour since we started this game. Nikowski here. Pitch to Durkin. Fastball chased. Runner going to third, second is Maxwell. He, there's two overthrows, and Maxwell's going to score on this. Maxwell and Dyer are going to score on this, and he'll push the score to nine to three. Throwing error by Roman. To s you can't say a throwing error. Just everyone missed the ball on the throw to second there. Maxwell was stealing on the full count pitch from first. Uh, got by everybody, including the center fielder. So Dyer and Maxwell were able to score on that. They'll push the lead two to six, nine to three for the Panthers. Now two outs for DeMars. A cleanup hitter for the Panthers. First pitch, fastball popped up. Looking at May hit this. Oh, just missed the bus. Or not our bus, but a bus. I mean, feet, people, feet. That would not be a fun bus ride home for sure. 0-1 count for DeMars. That fastball's hit weakly to first base. Ewart Kowski looks to be under it, and he's able to make the catch for out number three. Pop out to first for DeMars. Ends the inning, but not before the Panthers put up eight and take the lead. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. I am Jason Hevener. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Welcome back here to Sears Field in Marble Falls where the Panthers have just put up eight runs and have taken the lead with a total score of nine to three. Cole Jefferson will return to the mound, likely because the Panthers just put up eight. But he'll return to the mound, he'll be in his third inning of work, and he'll look to keep the Panthers in the lead of this game along with the Panther defense. Make looking for any defensive changes. I don't see any, so we're the same as we started with. If you were not here 
at first pitch. We got in left field Maxwell, center field Stavanaugh, right field DeMars, first base Durkin, second base Eller, shortstop Neely, third base is Noonschwanner, behind the plate is Carson Riley, and on the mound since the beginning is Cole Jefferson. Some big old like bugs flying around. They're kind of scary. The pitcher, Evan Nikowski. Sorry, that was a random comment, but just some big old bugs out here in Marble Falls. Leading off the inning for the Mustangs <laughs> is going to be Evan Nikowski, the pitcher. Uh, and he swings through that fastball from Jefferson for strike one. Last time he struck out, Jefferson will look to make that two times. That fastball swung straight through as well. So two strikes, two early strikes for on Nikowski. Making Jefferson's job easy right now. Pitch, here we go. That fastball, same spot, strike number three and out number one. Strikeout number six for Jefferson. So that's one out here in the bottom of the third. I'll change the scoreboard right now. Bottom of the third here in Marble Falls at Sears Field. Six strikeouts for Jefferson, who's working on the mound now. That's a first pitch bunt. It's going to be foul. Good idea by uh, Atkinson. Looking at Marble Falls Mustangs, looking to really get anything they can go right now. So Atkinson in his second at bat, like like Nikowski, struck out in his first. Jefferson will look to add another strikeout to his list. 0-1 count. Pitch here. Fastball swung through by Atkinson. Early 0-2 count here again for Jefferson. Here's pitch. Curveball. Fouled weakly. Back into the parking lot by Atkinson. So 0 2 count for the batter. One out here in the bottom of the third. Fastball, low. Be the first ball of the at bat. Atkinson, the second baseman, looking to start something for the Mustangs. Jefferson looking to add to his strikeout total. Pitch, fastball, swung through by Atkinson for strikeout number seven of the night for Jefferson. So that is two outs in the inning. Two outs now for as Hudson McBride comes to the plate in his first at bat. He walked. That one hit deep into right field. DeMars looks to be under it and able to make the catch for out number three. So now we'll head to the top of the fourth where Liberty Hill will look to extend their lead here in Marble Falls. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Bite Sports. BYP. Welcome back here to Marble Falls and Sears Field, where they're your Liberty Hill Panthers lead 9-3 over the Marble Falls Mustangs. Liberty Hill, if they can win this game, will get back to 500 in district play as they'll take on Leander and Georgetown at home next Tuesday and Friday night. Be there or listen live here on Vibe. We're live at 7 o'clock, actually at 6.50, 6.50, 6.45 every game day. You can always listen to the Liberty Hill Panthers through my voice. I'm Jason Heemner on Vibe Live. Mikowski back on the mound for the Mustangs. And I'm sure that has something to do with the fact that they just got shut down in about three minutes by Cole Jefferson and the Panthers. So I'm sure they're just trying to save arms at this point. If Nikowski struggles anymore, they'll have to replace him. But they're just trying to get out of this one now. 
Once again, Panthers up 9-3 to three here as we enter the top of the fourth. Let me make sure I've updated the scoreboard here. I have. So leading off this inning will be number 10, Caden Noonschwander, in his third at bat. RBI double is first. His second, he reached on air. What will he do in his third? First pitch from Nikowski. Fastball popped up. Out into the parking lot. Avoided any cars. I think I don't think any cards have been hit, even though there's been five or six sent out there. So 0 1 early for Noonschwanner. Here's the second pitch. That pitch inside works count to 1 and 1. One one count. Nikowski winds up, delivers. That fastball bounces in the dirt for ball number two. So 2-1 count for Noonschwander, leading off the Panthers here in the top half of the fourth inning. Pitch. That one hit hard down the third baseline. That's fair. That's going to be trouble. Noonschwander rounding first. He'll get to second. Left fielder has fielded it cleanly. Noonschwander will be up with a stand-up double. A leadoff double from Noonschwander. And the Panthers are right back where they were last inning. Now we got Trent Eller at the plate in his last at bat was one of these Eller RBI Eller. singles Eller. in the third inning. He'll look to maybe get another one right here. Noonchwaner on second base. Eller at the plate. First pitch from Nikowski. That's in the dirt. It gets past Roman. He has no idea where it is. Noonchwaner will score. And he'll or he won't score. He'll he'll advance to third. Sorry about that. So Noonschwander now at third, Eller at the plate, looking to drive Noonschwander in. 1-0 count after that curveball was in the dirt. Mikowski set. Pitch. That fastball hit into right center field by Eller. Noonschwander tagging. That'll be out number one. Noonschwander will tag, and he will score easily for the 10th run in the ball game for the Panthers. A good sacrifice fly there from Eller. That's a sack fly RBI for Eller. And that's a good piece of hitting there in that situation. Well, as good a piece of hitting you can as you don't. As, as good as a piece of hitting as you can get without getting on base. Nikowski there. First pitch to Stavanoa. In there for strike one. Panthers now have a lead of seven. After Noonchwander scored on the sack fly from Eller. Riley just loves that spot in front of the camera, man. Always in the spotlight. That ball fouled back here towards the dugout. Coach Bisher at first base will field it up and toss it to toss it to Riley. You'll be able to see this. Yep, now Riley has the foul ball in his back pocket. It's good stuff. Mikowski, 0-2 count on Stavanoa. Pitch, that fastball's way high. So one to two counts, one out here in the top of the fourth. Nikowski pitching to Stavanoa. That one hit hard, first base line, just foul. Hard hit ball, maybe the hardest we've seen all night. But just a little bit foul, a little bit in front of it for Stavanoa. Nikowski winds up, delivers. That one. Called strike three. Stavano will go down looking for out number two. Number 28, Carson Riley. So now Carson Riley, the catcher in the batter's box. Previous at bats, a single and an RBI single. So two for two on the night. That fastball is way high. Bounces on the backstop here. So 1 0 to Riley. Two outs here in the top half of the fourth. Panthers leading by seven in this district matchup. That pitch, that one's high again. Not sure what's going on with Nikowski here. Maybe trying to overthrow his fastball a little bit, or maybe just tired. You know, he has pitched through. 
me calculate this real quick. 9, 18, 27, 26 at bats. That fastball does find the zone. Works count to 2 and 1. Nikowski winds up the pitch to Riley. That curveball, good eye by Riley. Will work to count to three and one. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Liberty Hill leading by seven over the Mustangs at Searsfield in Marble Falls. Nikowski the pitch. That one's in the dirt. Riley will jog down to first base. So that's a walk. So Riley has reached base on all three at bats tonight the only Liberty Hill player to do so. Driving up his OBP, his on-base percentage. Never too good at Neely. So now Neely at the plate. Neely, two pop-outs on the night. Looking to change that fortune in this at-bat. Riley at first, or er, Rutherford at first base running for Riley. Courtesy runner for the catcher. So that's a First pitch curveball out of the zone for ball number one. So 1 0 count for Neely. Nikowski set. Delivers. Rutherford going. Strike. Good throw by Roman. And he's going to be safe. A little swim move by Rutherford there. The second baseman Atkinson took the throw and just laid the tag there. Rutherford just avoided the tag. Good call there by the, good positioning by the uh, field umpire to have a good angle on that call. Rutherford with the steal. And now he's in scoring position for Neely, who watched a fastball that was right down Broadway. So one to one, that pitch, high, works count to two and one. So two one count for Neely now. Facing Nikowski for the third time. Looking to reach base for the first time tonight. He'll check Rutherford. No one's on the bag. Rutherford's fine. Can't see Rutherford on the far right side of your screen in the yellow uniforms Liberty Hill wearing tonight. That fastball in the dirt for ball three. They wear their white pinstripes at home and the and the yellow away. Yellow look's been seen around Liberty Hill recently in football and now baseball. So 3-1 count for Neely. Mikowski hears the pitch. That one's high. Neely will jog down to first base as well. Two consecutive walks for uh, for Nikowski, and Nikowski's going to talk with Roman, his catcher. If we keep going, if we keep batting like this, I'm going to have to extend my little stat column I have and add a fifth at-bat category because Dyer's coming to the plate for his fourth at-bat of the night. It's hard to get that many at bats in a uh, seven inning ball game, but when you score 10 runs, you can do it. You can do it. So now we got Neely on first, Rutherford on second, Dyer at the plate, facing Nikowski for the fourth time. Looks like he went on that pass ball, and he did. But now two runners in scoring position, albeit an 0 1 count. I do believe the home plate umpire said he went. The scoreboard counted that one as a ball, but I think it's 0-1. Pretty certain there. It's so an 0-1 count for Dyer. Kowski the pitch. That one's high. That's 1-1. One one. Dyer looking to get another, some more RBIs. Has two already in this ballgame. Pitch. That, that ball is way high again. Nikowski just not even close right now. Just It's got to be tired after facing this lineup three times. But the Mustangs just trying to get pitches out of him, save everybody else they can for Friday. Here's the pitch. That one hits Dyer. Dyer will load the bases after that hit by pitch. Kind of just kind of grazed him on the maybe the hand or elbow and then he he's fine he's looking good but now the bases are loaded for Chase Maxwell Maxwell with an RBI single in his last at bat 
And it looks like Coach Porter for the Mustangs has decided it is time. And if that's the case, we will uh, take a commercial break and be back when this ball game is ready to continue. It Mikowski's night is done. He's going to head to. We have a few some defensive defensive switches, and it looks like they're going to bring the lefty Brady Ilwartkowski to the mound. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back at the end of this little intermission here. This is you, I am Jason Hebner, and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Yes. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going, and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Fight Sports. BYP. I am back here in Marble Falls. We got Ilwarkowski warming up on the mound, but I was just browsing through Twitter on the break, which if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'll post the game links every Tuesday and Friday night. My handle is in the bottom left-hand corner. You can reach out to me there with anything you may want to talk about or just have the game links readily available. I was browsing Twitter and it, it looks like if you're a March Madness fan, St. Peter's may be about to beat Purdue, which uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm actually going to Indiana University in the fall. So if Purdue loses, I mean, heck yeah. If you're not aware of that rivalry, Indiana and Purdue is like the Texas, Texas A&M of Texas. And St. Peter's is up two with 25 seconds left. We'll have to monitor this a little bit. I know all of you pick St. Peter's, you know, the 15 seed to go to your Elite Eight. I mean, 100%, right? It was a lock for me. But we'll, uh, as Elorkowski's warming up, he looks like he may be ready. Panthers are up 10-3 to three in this matchup. Bases are currently loaded, and they'll have Chase Maxwell at the plate. Only reason I guarantee you my uh, Twitter had the Purdue news is, or the St. Peter's Purdue game is because that, well, <laughs> follow a lot of Indiana basketball accounts, and they're always rooting against Purdue, as harsh as that may seem. But we're just about ready here. Hey, Cash. But we're ready here. Elor Kowski will take the mound with the bases loaded. Chase Maxwell at the plate. E. Wartkowski working from the stretch. First pitch fastball swung on and missed by Maxwell. It's going to be a little bit different here facing a lefty after facing Nikowski for the entire game. We'll see what Maxwell could do. Two outs here in the inning. That pitch popped out of play. It's heading back towards the parking lot. A little side relief there. It missed my car by a few feet, but, you know, should should have thought a little bit more about the parking situation here. I should have, personally. Parked a little bit further away, maybe. That pitch. Fastball chased by Maxwell. That'll be out number three. And Elorkowski will do his job. He'll get, this, get him out of the inning. And we'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Marble Falls. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back here to Marble Falls where, yeah, um, I think, I do believe that St. Peter's just, yeah, St. Peter's just beat Purdue, so, <laughs> go St. Peter's. No, 
Uh, I was just looking at a stat. No 15 seed has ever beaten and has ever reached the Elite Eight, and St. Peter's just has. And if you haven't heard the story of the St. Peter's, I think they're the Peacocks. If you haven't heard that story, uh, it's really interesting to see how they've had so much success with what little they have. It's a commuter school in New Jersey that has just now exploded now, and they're in the Elite Eight. Jefferson back on the mound for the Panthers here in the bottom half of the fourth. Had a strike one to Edel Orkowski. That one popped up into shallow left field. Neely's under it. He'll make the catch for out number one. I'll change the scoreboard. We're in the bottom of the four now. You know, I was just too too energetic whenever I saw Purdue lost to St. Peter's. As a future Hoosier that really really inspires me. So now we have one out here in the bottom of the fourth. And it looks like Kyle Curtis in the batter's box. First pitch, high fastball. After Elort Kowski popped out to shortstop. Here's the pitch from Jefferson. That one grounded through the hole, or not through the hole, and nearly able to get his glove on and stop it a little bit, but not able to make the play cleanly. That would have a 99% chance that Curtis would have beat out the throw from the deep hole there in shortstop. Only a few players in my time that I think have could made that throw, and that's Ryan Leary maybe had a chance at that. You know, the Texas State baseball player now who played here last year. One of the big losses for this Panther team from last year. So now Curtis on first base. Carter back in the Carter back in the batter's box for the third time. Singled in his last at bat. He'll look to mimic that success here. Jefferson, the pitch. That fastball, a little low. Here's the pitch from Jefferson. That one fouled back by Carter. Works count to one and two. So one, two now for Carter. In the batter's box for the third time, facing Jefferson. Jefferson in his fourth inning of work. Seven strikeouts so far. Three earned runs. Pitch. That one hit hard. Right past the diving Neely. And now be another single for Carter to add to his stat collection. After that, it looks like Liberty Hills is going to resort to another arm to finish out this ball game. Good outing by Jefferson if this is this, his final Looks like it will be. Good outing by Jefferson. Seven strikeouts on his night. And is in a position to get the win for this game. You can hear the crowd give some applause to, to Jefferson. Rightfully so. So it looks like C.J. Sherburn is going to head to the mound. And we'll take a short break. And we'll be back whenever Sherburn's ready to take on the Mustangs. We'll listen to some music this time, you know. Try to get some variety in here instead of the same little commercials every time. So we're just going to choose one. This one's called Good Morning. Well, that was quite interesting. I'm not sure I'll ever click that one again. But Connor Sherburn, or CJ Sherburn, I think as most people call him CJ, is warming up on the mound. He's a senior. Second team all district last year as a starting pitcher. Really came into form in the second half of the season last year. He's still looking to find that form this year. A little kind of struggle on the mound Tuesday night against Cedar Park. But he'll have a chance here to find his to really find his form. He'll have his situation will be one out. He'll have a runner on first and second, and he'll be facing Roman, the two-hole hitter for the Mustangs. 
We're in the bottom of the fourth, and it's 8.30. Um, personally, I'm hoping Liberty Hill can tack on some in the top half of the fifth, and we can have a run roll, just so I can get home a little bit earlier. Uh, we have academic UIL district tomorrow, and uh, I have to wake up pretty early for that, so I'm trying to, you know, be rested for some academic UIL. You wouldn't guess it, but it's all the math events. It's kind of a, it's quite the, quite the festival. But Sherburn here is ready. His first pitch to Roman. Fastball, strike one. So 0-1 count now for Roman. In the batter's box for the third time. A hit by pitch and a single on the night. So he's reached base twice. Sherburn checks his runner on second. Now goes to the plate. Roman fouls that one into over to, towards his dugout. So for the Mustangs, it looks like Carter is on first, and that would be Curtis. Yeah, Curtis on second base. Letters are kind of hard to see. They all kind of look the same to me. The 17 and 11 do not look much differently. we got one of those moss flying around. So runners on first and second for Roman. One out here in the bottom half of the fourth. Sherburn, first batter in relief. Curveball swung through by Roman for out number two. And I will say after watching Sherburn last year and now this year, it's his curveball is a thing of beauty. A thing of beauty. All the Panther relievers have great curveballs. And uh, yeah, I think pitching coach Kyle Bisher has something to do with that. So two outs now. First pitch, fastball, swung on by Cale Cochran into the plate for his third time. A fielder's choice and a strikeout on his night. 0-1 oh, count to him right now. Sherburn set, checks Curtis. Now goes to the plate. Fastball swung through by Cochran. Now an 0-2 count. Sherburn looking to retire, retire the inning now on this pitch here. 0-2 oh, for Cochran. Sherburn set. Now delivers. Fastball. A little high. Good chase pitch, but Cochran didn't chase it. So now a 1-2 count for Cochran. Facing Sherburn. Sherburn in on relief for Cole Jefferson. That one. Curveball. Just barely hit by Cochran over towards the marble dugout. So we got a 1-2 count, two outs here in the bottom half of the fourth. Runners on first and second for the Mustangs. Cochran at the plate, that pitch swung through by Cochran, and that'll be the second strikeout of Sherburn's night on his second batter face to the night to end the fourth inning. And we'll head to the top of the five where Liberty Hill will look to extend their lead here at Sears Field in Marble Falls. I'm Jason Hebert. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe. VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Welcome back here to Marble Falls and Sears Field, where the Mustangs are back on the field. Panthers back, going to be back at the plate. They'll be hitting for their fifth time. Leading off this inning will be will be Durkin. And then DeMars, then Nunschwander, the three, four, five hitters for the Panthers. And if you're Brady E. Lortkowski, not really the stretch you want to be facing right now. But a, a lefty could have some success against Durkin, maybe, on the lefty on lefty matchups. But I've never thought that had a true effect as much as it does, as people say it does. Now, unless you're facing someone like, I mean, Chris Sale or. You know, those guys where they're just slinging it from the side. 
then the lefty on lefty matchup does have something to uh does have some negatives to it. But it looks like Evil Wartkowski is ready and if I mean I could be butchering that name, so if you're a family member of Evil Wartkowski and you're listening, just give me some grace on that one. So we're in the top of the fifth now. Durkin leading off for the Panthers. First pitch, fastball, strike one. Durkin, 0-1 count. Here's the second pitch. Curveball. And it hit him. A little curveball slipped away from Elwortkowski, and Durkin just let it kind of nick his hand, and he'll jog down to first base. So Durkin hit by that pitch, and he reaches base for the third time. Two singles on the night and that hit by pitch for Durkin, and along, well, along with a strikeout. So now we have the four-hole hitter, Colby DeMars. Elortkowski working from the stretch. First pitch fastball on to DeMars in there for strike one. 0-1 count to DeMars after the first pitch fastball. Durkin on first base for Liberty Hill. Pitch. That one popped up high. It's looking like it's going to be foul. Yeah, it's going to be foul. Just outside the dugout. Looks like Tyler Williams, who was stretching a little bit out there, will just... Let's throw that ball back in. Noonschwander has it, and he'll hand it to the umpire right in front of your screen. Amazing. So, now an 0-2 count for DeMars. DeMars is going to get something going. Only a walk in the first inning is the only time he's reached base. Here's the pitch. That curved ball fouled straight back for DeMars. A little in front of it. Like seem a little more patient there. Maybe sit back a little bit more and drive it. Big hole down the left field line. Big hole in right center field. Edwardkowski the pitch. That fastball's low in the dirt. Roman stops it. It was right under him. He had he took him a minute to find it, but Durkin's still at first base. So a one two count now. Four. DeMars facing Elortkowski. Elortkowski in his second inning of work. Came on in relief for their starting pitcher, Nikowski. That ball hit hard straight to the shortstop, and they're going to double up here. Hard hit ball from DeMars straight at Carter, the shortstop. Durkin, I mean, trying to advance I mean, on that hard hit ball, just instincts, and just unable to get back in time. So that's going to be two outs here. Now in the top of the fifth. So a line out. Two shortstop for DeMars. Nothing you can really... Eh, you can do a little bit there for Durkin, but you can't fault him on that one. Here's Edelortkowski now facing Noonschwander. First pitch fastball is low for ball one. Second pitch now. That one... Is it kind of weird? Almost looks like he hit off the bounce. I don't... Probably not. Maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe he just kind of golf swinged it. It was a low fastball. It was hit out of play. So we have a 1-1 one, one count now. Here's a pitch from Elortkowski. That one hit to second baseman by Eller. Second baseman will throw it to McBride at first now. And that will be out number three. A 1-2-3 inning for the Mustangs. And we'll head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Right now, we will stay right here because we're going to recognize a few Liberty Hill members. So, the awards for boys basketball this year have been released from the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches, or the TABC for short. For Liberty Hill this year, Walker Weems was all region four, was all region four team, and Anthony Sierras was all region four team and all state five A team. Congratulations to both of them and the entire team on their great season this year. Went to the third rounds of the playoffs, won the district in only their second year of 5A. Great job, boys basketball. Turn up the, uh, the crowd mic. We got a little sweet Caroline going. Should be able to hear it now. As Sherburn warms up, we'll let you listen to the music. Sweet Caroline, good times never seem so good. 
so good. So good. So good. Bum, bum, bum. And it looks like Sherburn's one pitch away as we listen to some sweet clear line, some Neil Diamond. A classic ballpark song. Panthers comfortable lead here in this district matchup, looking to advance to two and two in district play. The Mustangs, if the standings hold right now, they'd fall to 0 and 4. Once again, uh, if you weren't with us earlier, Liberty Hill this next week on Tuesday night playing Leander at home, Friday night playing Georgetown at home. Join us here on Vipe Live or at the ballpark for those games. First pitch Sherburn of the inning is a strike to Zamaripa. Zamaripa with a walk and a strike out tonight. That one grounded to Noonchwander. Noonchwander feels it cleanly. Will make the throw across a diamond. Great play from Noonchwander for route number one. Reason he was first team all district last year, and he's got a glove over a glove and a cannon over there at third base. Foul ball pushed Noonchwander out of play. Noonchwander able to load back and fire one across to Durkin for route number one, and to retire Zamarika on the ground out to third. First pitch to Mikowski, and he'll single that one up the middle. And will be the first runner to reach off of Sherburn. Good piece of hitting, first piece fastball, just took it right up the middle by Nikowski. So now in the game, or <laughs> now at the play is Atkinson, and Atkinson, two strikeouts on the night, so he's looking to maybe expand that First pitch from Sherburn. Fastball swung straight through by Atkinson. Oh, 1 now. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. Liberty Hill leading 10 to 3 over the Marble Falls Mustangs. Sherburn checks his runner, goes to the plate. That fastball swung through by Atkinson. Gets past Riley. He's going to go. Nikowski's going to go advance a second on that. And he's there pretty easily. Probably did throw it down, but throw a little wide, and Nikowski was already there anyways. So now Nikowski's on second base, and at the plate is Atkinson. Atkinson does have an 0-2 count. Sherburn will look to retire him on this pitch. Fastball swung straight through by Atkinson for out number two. Third strikeout of the night for Sherburn. And we have two outs now in the bottom as of the fifth. Liberty Hill looking to keep this lead at seven. They'll bring Hudson McBride to the plate. Started the game at third base, but he's playing first base now. After some, after Nikowski was pulled, they had some defensive switches. I'm not aware of all of them, but I do know McBride's at first. First pitch curveball from Sherburn in there for strike one. When Sherburn's at his best uh, this last year, he was using his curveball to set up his fastball. The exact opposite of what most pitchers do. Uh, but it was really a beauty to watch. That that one's hit into left field pretty weakly. Maxwell under it. Able to make the catch for out. Number three. We'll head to the top of the sixth inning here at Sears Field in Marble Falls. I'm Jason Hume. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. <laughs> For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Welcome back here to Marble Falls. Elort Kowski will return to the mound for his... I just had to did, did a little take. I thought the number looked weird, but it's the same. Number eight, Brady Elort Kowski will return to the mound for his third inning of work. And he'll face the Panther lineup. It looks like Eller Stavanoa. 
Riley will be the first three this inning. Some fans starting to tunnel out here as they feel this one may be considered over. Start the drive back to Liberty Hill or back to the homes in Marble Falls. Like I was saying in pre in our pregame well, our little pregame segment, Liberty Hill is this is their furthest district opponent, about 45 minutes away. Um, the fastest route is through 1431 to 1174 to 1869. Kind of a scenic route. Goes by some wildlife refuge, the Balconies, Canyonlands. Cool drive, kind of hilly. And everyone be safe if they're driving back, going home tonight. Kind of a dangerous road at night sometimes if you don't know it. As we're ready to set here, the sixth inning. First pitch to uh, from Elortkowski hits the back, hits the netting behind the plate, and Roman tell him to tell him to calm down. Excuse me. So one zero count for Eller. Here's the second pitch, fastball, low for ball number two. Winds up, delivers. That one, ground ball hit to the hole. That's going to get through there. And Eller will reach base for his fourth time tonight. Oh, not his fourth time. I'm, I'm off one batter. Okay, let me adjust this. Single. I miss what Noonchwander did last inning. But I know it was an out, so I think he flew out. So I'll just write fly out. Anyways. Ella reaches for his third time tonight. My stats were a little off there for one second. We self-corrected. And Stavanoa is back in the batter's box now. And when Stavanoa is in the batter's box, it means Carson Riley is on the on-deck circle. Oh, it's like he knows I'm talking about him. Oh, there he is. He'll usually move back into frame. He'll be there. If you're Carson Riley, you fan or family, you're having a great view of him right now. So 2-0 count. All fun and games with Carson there. Nothing nothing against him. He's a great guy. He's in one of my classes. Good guy. Good baseball player. 2-0 count. You work Kowski to Stavanoa. High fastball. Works his count to 3-0. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Liberty Hill leading by seven over the Mustangs. So, Elort Kowski takes a sign from Roman. Pitch. That fastball's away and walks. And he will walk Stavanoa on four pitches. So now, runners on first and second for the Panthers. And Carson Riley at the plate. Riley with single, a single and a walk in his last three at-bats. It's three at-bats of the game, I should say. So he's reached base three times. He'll look to become four for four tonight. Keep boosting that on-base percentage. He saw a first pitch strike from E. Lortkowski. Eller dancing at second base. E. Lortkowski kind of looking at him. Here's the pitch to the plate. Riley fouls it straight back. Worked the count to 0-2. You'll see Neely run by a camera here. Just about now. There he is. Got that foul ball from behind the plate. So 0 2 to Riley. Pitch. Fastball. Inside. Works count to 1 and 2. So 1 2 count for Carson Riley at the plate, the junior. Junior catcher. Eller on second, Stavano on first. Pitch to the plate, high fastball. Riley now works count to two and two. Three one count. Scoreboard got corrected. That ball's fouled out of play. That'll bring it to three and two now. So now a full count for Carson Riley. Runners on first and second, no outs here in the inning. Elortkowski the pitch. Fastball, rung him up. Carson Riley didn't really agree with that one. 
But nonetheless, we'll have one out now in the inning. So now first and s runners on first and second still, but now Garrett Neely. Neely reached base last time with a walk. He'll look to do it again here. Maybe get a hit this time. Pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Good jump on second by Eller. He's to third easy with the advancement to third by Eller. Stavano advanced to second as well. So now Neely looking to get an RBI here some way, somehow. Put the ball in play. Give it a chance. 1-0 count for him for Garrett Neely. Senior going to UT Dallas. Good friend of mine. That pitch fouled back into the parking lot. Avoided any collisions. So now 1-1. One, one. Here's the pitch. That one is high. We'll work his count to two and one. Two one count for Neely now. Neely with two runners in scoring position, looking to extend the lead for Liberty Hill. Currently at seven. Here's the pitch. That fastball fouled back again. He's close on it. Just a little bit off of it right now. If he can find it, he can drive it in or drives in some runs. Here's the pitch from Ela Wartkowski. That one's way high. We'll work the count to full. So full count here for Neely in his fourth at bat of the game. Excuse me. Runner on second in Stavano. Runner on third in Eller. Batter at the plate is Neely. Pitch. Fastball low, and Neely will jog down to first base. And Panthers will have the bases loaded once again. So let me record that. Two walks in the game for Neely. And we'll head to the fifth at bat for Logan Dyer, the leadoff hitter for the Panthers. Dyer with a, I mean, fly out. He reached on an error, a two RBI single, and then a hit by pitch. So what will he do this time? It's really a guessing game. I would like the uh, RBI triple. Just, you know, push this lead to 10 so we can, you know, I'm not sure after 6 if it goes down to 8. It may go down to 8. So if we can get 8 after 6, we just need one run in here to score. And then if the Panthers can hold the Mustangs in the bottom half of the inning, then we can get out of here a little bit earlier. Almost 9 o'clock. This game, you know, whenever there's a lot of scoring in the game, they're usually, they go, they don't go too fast. But you like to see it if you're a Panther fan and, I imagine many of you all listening are Panther fans. I am a Panther fan, so it's always good to hear these Panthers bats dinging. It's a much different story from um, from Tuesday night, and they, they've checked the box off for me of wake up the bats. And then they've also checked off the bats of establish a mound presence with a great game from Cole Jefferson. Went four and a third... I believe, of seven strikeouts, few earned runs, but, I mean, much better performance than what we saw from any pitcher on Tuesday. And it's one of the key parts why the Panthers are most likely going to take this win here. Dyer at the plate, 1-0 count. Bases loaded. Fastball hit weakly to third. Third baseman will tap on his bag, go across the dime, and Dyer will beat it out for an RBI fielder's choice. So the Panthers now are at 11. So now it's 11 to 3. Stavano is out on the fielder's choice. Elder able to score. So now running on first and second for Maxwell. Dyer on first, Neely on second. Maxwell at the plate. First pitch from Elortkowski. Fastball low. Roman able to stop it behind the plate. Elortkowski just trying to find the strike zone here. And when he does, the Panthers are doing a good job of putting it in play. Pitch here. Fastball swung through. Makes sense, as I was just talking about how they were putting it in play. So now we got a 1-1 count. Two outs here in the top half of the sixth. Panthers up eight. 
over the Mustangs. Checks Neely at second. Checks him again. Here's the pitch. That one fouled back into the backstop. Right, into the into the little wall. So now we got a one-two count for Maxwell. For Mark Madness update, it looks like Kansas defeated Providence. Not not a or a very expected outcome there. Not like no St. Peter's business. So 2-2 two -two count for Maxwell now. Runners in first and second form. Here's, oh, called a balk. I believe he didn't come set. No, uh, so the runners will advance to second and third now. Elortkowski, he's got to come set there. I mean, he just went straight into his pitch. Mustang's having a tough season this year. He's trying to get out of this game. That ball's popped out right here into the stands. <laughs> Looks like it was caught in a bag. Some celebration from the Panther fans. Got stuck in a bag. But looks like the Panther dugout will not have to wander too far for that foul ball. <laughs> Someone said home run when they caught that ball. So here's Maxwell, 2-2 two -two count. That ball popped up again. That's going to be maybe the same place. Oh, hit the hit a fence and Will Snell, who was getting that last foul ball, will get that one again right there with him. So two runners in scoring position for Maxwell. 2-2 two -two count, two outs. Here we go. That fastball is high. I'll work the count to full. Starting to get temperature dropping a little bit. Not too, not jacket needing, but, you know, maybe in a few minutes we may need one. Foul tip for Maxwell. Now will be a strikeout to end the inning. Panthers up eight. We'll head to the bottom half of the inning where the Panthers will look to close out the Mustangs. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live, and I am Jason Hebner. Yes. For the end zone. Touchdown. Sorry, I don't want to play the same ad twice. Here you go. Here's a different one. Vipe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VipeVipe.com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VipeVipe.com. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill, or <laughs> to Liberty Hill Baseball. We are in Marble Falls at Sears Field. About 45 minutes away from Liberty Hill. Where the Panthers are currently up eight over the Mustangs in the as we're in about to start the bottom half of the sixth inning. Connor Sherburn back in the mound in his his third inning of relief for Cole Jefferson. Jefferson, seven strikeouts. Sherburn three so far. Dead strikeouts so far for the Panther pitching staff. And they're having success. Only allowing three runs. Doing a good job of Limiting the damage after Cedar Park's or Tuesday's loss to Cedar Park. First pitch for Sherburn. Fouled out of play by the batter Brady Elortkowski. Started it started at first base, now the pitcher. So now 0-1 count for him. Sherburn wind up deliver. That one a little bit high and away. Will work the count to one and one. Can't see any defensive substitutions for the Panthers. Sticking with the starting lineup still. Sherburn, here we go. That one fouled back at the net. You see the net a little bounce a little bit in the in your camera, in your field of view. About five feet to the right of where our camera is currently set up. Once again, as far as we can get it over without as just by the way this broad this team this is built here in Marble Falls. That's a ground ball to Durkin. Durkin fields it cleanly, steps on the bag for out number one. For some reason, a lot of our 
district opponent's fields, to not have it like if you've been to the Liberty Hill baseball field where there's an easy place for, you know, our, us announcers to set up our tables and stuff. So at some of these fields, I mean, Marble Falls one, Leander's another one, we have to set up on the side. And we're kind of limited by how far our camera can be. My camera can be about 20 feet away from where I am. But about no further, and it really needs to be about twice or three times that distance to be behind the, to get that ideal view for y'all. But you can always listen. I am try to always talk. I'm not really a talker, but we do our best to describe the game to you listeners or viewers, no matter how you're doing this. Sherburn 1-1 one, one count to this batter, Curtis, as Curtis fouls that one back, and that'll be 1-2 one, count. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. I'm about 75% certain that if the Panthers hold the Mustangs here, it would be the ball game because it'd be eight after six, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll we'll check to see if that happens as Sherburn throws a beautiful curveball and strikes out Curtis. Four strikeout of his relief appearance. Four strikeout of his relief appearance. Sorry. I think I said fourth the first time as well, but here's the first pitch to Carter. So 1-0 to Carter. Sherburn pitch. That curveball falls in there for strike one. Works count to one and one. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Sherburn looking to retire the side. Here's the pitch. Fastball, a little inside. Two one count for the batter, Carter. Carter in his fourth at bat of the game. Two singles on the night. That fastball just a bit high for Sherburn. So now Carter has a three one count. Pitch. That one finds his own. Full count. That one is hit, grounded to Eller. Good play, spinning throw to first base for out number three. Let me read the body language of everybody here. See if we're having another inning or not. Okay. We will head to the seventh inning here in Marble Falls. We'll take a short 30 second break and be back with the final inning here in Marble Falls. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Okay, welcome back here to Marble Falls. Once again, before we run out of time here, if you ever want to follow any updates of the game, updates of the broadcast link, when we'll be going live, any events like that, follow the Twitter link in the bottom left-hand corner, Hebner Jason, for all the latest for Panther baseball on Vipe Live news. Not only specific audience, but if you have a Twitter, I'd appreciate a follow. I'm always posting the game day links make it easier for you to find. Looks like here in the top of the seventh, Elort Kowski will return to the mound and we'll have some pinch hitters for the Panthers. Looks like the first one will be um, Gavin Voth, a sophomore. He'll get in at bat. Then it looks it may be number five, Tanner Kearley. Then after that, we may look like number nine, Ty Maldonado. We'll confirm this as they get to the plate, but looking like some new new batters for the Panthers here in the seventh top in the last inning. They're trying to get some at-bats here. So here's Gavin Voth. First at-bat of the game. He's facing 
um, what's his name, Elort Kowski, in his fourth inning of work. First pitch fastball, low for ball number one. Elort Kowski from the windup, second pitch to Voth. That fastball's in the same spot. That one called a strike, though. 1-1 one, one count to, to Voth, the sophomore. High fastball from Elort Kowski will be ball number two. Excuse me. Here's the pitch. That one's inside. Works a count to three and one. Panthers leading by eight here in the last inning of play. That fastball bounces and kind of hits him off the foot. Would have been a walk anyway if he would have got out of the way, but hits him, and he'll take it down to first base. And it does look like we will now have Tanner Kearley stepping into the batter's box. The junior. Has a brother, older brother, Jacob Kearley, a few years ago. If you're a follower of Liberty Hill sports fans, was the quarterback on a the state team uh, in 2018, I believe. That one fouled down the first baseline, and it'll be out of play for strike number one. Kearley listed as an infielder. Looks like he's batting right now for Noonschwander. Looks like Voth was batting for um, for DeMars, maybe. Here's the pitch. Kearley watches that one fastball in the dirt. We'll work the count to two and one. So Voth on first base. Kearley at the plate facing E. Lortkowski. That fastball's high and away for ball number three. E. Lortkowski struggling to find the zone right now. Walk to Voth, may walk Kearley here. Checks his runner, now goes to the plate. That fastball's high, and Kearley will walk as well. Seems frustrated to take the walk, but he'll take it, I guess. So now it looks like Ty Maldonado will be the batter. Maldonado, a junior as well, will face E. Lortkowski in his first at bat. Keely on first, Voth on second. Maldonado at the plate. Fastball in the dirt for ball number one. Reach the two hour and about ten minute mark in this ball game, and it's just keep on going. When this game's over in our post game segment, we'll probably have time to find the. Uh, the scores of the other district ball games that were happening tonight because they should have been finished a little bit while ago. 2-0 now to Maldonado. Here's the pitch. That one's in the dirt and E. Lordkowski just not close right now. I mean, first one in the dirt, second one above, above Maldonado's head. Last one in the dirt as well. And if you're Coach Tyler Porter, you're trying to finish his game out with him, but you may have to change change it now. Change one more time. That one is called a ball, and Ewartkowski has walked the bases loaded on walks of Voth, Kearley, and Maldonado. So now Will Snell is in the game, and it looks like Coach Porter may heed my advice. We'll work to confirm this before we go to cut to break or listen to some more tunes, but if he does change pitchers, we will take some sort of intermission, and it looks like he will. Let's see who he calls upon before we 
Looks like he'll call upon the second baseman, Atkinson. And we will tune to an intermission. We'll see what I'm feeling like whenever we uh, get to the MP4 program. But Looks like we're going to... I'm kind of feeling some... We're going to call this one some... It's called... Uh, sorry. It's called Parachute. Let's enjoy the parachute tunes while we um, look at some... Look at a uh, pitching change. Here we go. Parachute. <laughs> That was quite enjoyable. I'm going to look for some updates on that girls' playoff soccer game we said that was going on in the pregame. <laughs> Taking Alamo Heights on in the first Brown playoff game. Looks like there's been no updates to the score. Or the, uh, the Facebook post that should have the score. So we have no idea. Game game 16, I'm going to take a short glance on see if we can get any other district scores while we're waiting here while we have some downtime if it would update maybe here we go let's see if there's anything updated here if you are a baseball fan and you don't know of 5A Texas High School Baseball. It's a great website. It has all the information you need to know. And it does look like Rouse uh, beat Glenn tonight by a score of... S oh, hold on. No, Rouse beat Eastview tonight by a score of 6-2. to two. And it looks like Cedar Park defeated Glenn 3-2. to two. So that pushes Rouse to 4-0. and oh, Glenn, or... Uh, Cedar Park to three and one, Glenn to zero oh and four, and Eastview to one and three. Of course, if Panthers win this game, they'll go to two and two, and then we'll await the results of the Leander Lions versus Georgetown Eastview game. It looks like that I Atkinson's ready now, and will he'll face Will Snell. First pitch fastball in there for strike one. Snell has the bases loaded here. Panthers up eight over the Mustangs right now, and here in the last inning of play, Atkinson set. Second pitch coming to Snell. That fastball also called strike two. So strike two, Snell's going to have to swing it here. Atkinson looks like he knows his duty. Just throw strikes and let him hit it. Hope they hit it to a defender. Atkinson set. Bases loaded for the Panthers. No outs here in the top seventh. That one's high. Works count to one and two. Looks like on deck we'll have another pinch hitter in Burrow de Belay. So one, two count. That ball bounces in the dirt. Works count to two and two. So after an early 0-2 count on Snell, he's worked it down to two and two. Looking to put something in play and keep driving in runs for Liberty Hill. As another curveball gets by Roman and Voth will score pretty easily. Kearley will advance to third, and now and so will Maldonado advance to second, and that will push the score to 12 to two. So now up nine, full count to Snell. Atkinson on the mound for the Mustangs, just trying to figure some things out, trying to get some outs for him. That fastball called a ball, and Snell will walk it down to first base. So now the base is loaded for number 20, Brody Blay. So Blay now in the batter's box, the lefty, the, left, the senior lefty.
First pitch fastball inside for ball one. Home plate umpire not really expanding his zone for this. these at-bats here in what some would call pity time. Base is loaded for the Panthers. That fastball's low and, low and inside. Now work the count to 2-0. So 2-0 count, no outs here in the top of the seventh. Looking at two hours and 15 minutes of lap so far. That one grounded to the shortstop. And no play is going to be made, so that will be an RBI single for Blay. And the Panthers will now have the lead by 10. Right off the end of the bat for Blay, just to the shortstops, and just weakly hit past the third baseman, not able to make a play. So now the Panthers up 10, and now it looks like Jonathan Bartfield. Jonathan Barfield at the plate, the junior catcher. Primarily serves as the bullpen catcher so far this season. But getting it at bat here. First pitch swinging for strike one. Base is loaded for him. No out still. As he hits that ball into shallow center field, it could be trouble. Looks like a second baseman is able to make the play, and they'll keep the runners where they are. While we have a minute, I'd like to thank my QA, Daniel, tonight for making sure we sound good. And he is watching periodically and letting us make sure we sound good. Thank you, Daniel, for all that you're doing, all for everything you do for Vipe Live, including all the other broadcasts you're monitoring at the moment. So only one out here. Now after the bar the Barfield uh, fly out, it looks like that's going to be Lane Rybarski now at the plate. In the top seven here, one out. Rybarski at the plate with the bases loaded. Atkinson the pitch. Fastball high. Works count to one and one. So we got... 1-1 one, one count for Rybarski. That fastball hit hard. Foul down the third base line. He looked to uh, straighten that out here and put it in play. Hard hit ball by Rybarski. Just a little in front of it. Now I have a little delay here as the left fielder. Can't tell who it is from this far, but left fielder went to go and get it. Here's the pitch. That one's inside to Rybarski. will work the count to 2-2. Two and two. So 2-2 two -two for Rybarski, the also a junior. Pitcher, infielder. Atkinson the pitch. Curveball. Looks like it could have been close, but called a ball, so we'll have a full count now. And he's called strike three on that one. And that will be the second out of the inning. So now two outs here in the top of the seventh, and we'll have Dyer. <laughs> Dyer's in for a six at bat of the game. I mean, we'll go through his first at bat. He flew out to center. Second at bat, he reached on the air. Third at bat, an RBI single. Fourth at bat, he got hit by the pitch. Fifth at bat, he had an RBI fielder's choice. Sixth at bat, oh, I don't know. I'll guess a double. Just playing a guessing game. We'll go double. So now we got 1-0 count after the first pitch ball. Atkinson has the bases loaded, trying to get the Mustangs out of this jam. That's the ball in the dirt for ball number two. Oh, my goodness. There's a giant moth on my computer. Don't worry. It's gone now. Shoot it away. Atkinson the pitch. That one hit into left center field high. The left fielder should be under it. And he is able to make out number three. So we'll head to the bottom of the seventh inning where Liberty Hill will look to close out this game and take their second district win. I'm Jason Hebner. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. 
Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Welcome back here. While we have a minute, while we're listening to those Vibe commercials, I like to thank everybody at Vibe for from Suna Vincat, the technology prodigy, to Merle Bertrand, my boss and vice, voice of the Vandegrift Vipers, and also our QA tonight, Daniel, for just helping us out in any way we need, helping me out whenever I need it, and always being nice and professional about it. Looks like on the mound now, we're going to see Tyler Williams in a what I like to call a non-save save situation. He'll get the one inning relief appearance. Would never be called a save because it's a 10 run lead, but the non-save save appearance. So we'll get, we got the defensive changes because we had all those pinch hitters last inning. We got Williams on the mound, Barfield behind the plate, Maldonado at third, Rybarski at short, Snell at second, Voth at first. In the outfield, it looks like we got DeMars maybe still in right. Now pitching for Liberty Hill number 22, Tyler Williams. Stavanoa in center and Maxwell, I'd say, in left field. No, not Maxwell. That's Rutherford in the left field. So Williams almost done with his warm-up here. And we'll get the bottom of seventh underway. Panthers, assuming they hold on to this lead, would advance a 2-2 two and two in district play. Mustangs would fall to 0-4. Oh Once again, I'll say it for about the third time now, Liberty Hill playing uh, Leander next Tuesday at home and Georgetown next Friday at home. You can either be at attend the game in person or you can watch it here on Vipe Live. We'll be live 645 every game day covering Liberty Hill baseball. So Williams on the mound, his first batter he'll face is Roman, the catcher. Panthers three outs away from a victory. First one is hit into left field. It looks like Rutherford is going to be un unable to make the catch. Just fell out of his glove. Looks like he had a real shallow left field. The ball got caught up in the wind, blowing in. Just Rutherford unable to make the catch. Roman will reach on that. Number 13, Kill Cochran. On that note. So now Kale Cochran coming to the going into the game. First pitch fastball high from Tyler Williams. Cochran with a 1-0 count. Williams takes his sign from Barfield. Checks his runner. Now to the plate. High fastball. 2-0. So 2-0 count for Cochran at the plate. Roman on first base. Fastball swung through by Cochran for strike number one. Tyler Williams set now. Pitch swung on, swung through. So now a 2-2 count for Cochran. Williams looking to get the first out of the bottom half of the seventh. Pitch. Fastball. Strike three for Cochran. Strikeout for Tyler Williams. So now one out after the strikeout of Kale Cochran. And he'll bring up Zamaripa. Roman still on first base. Zamaripa at the plate in his fourth that bad of the game. Looks like two strikeouts and a fielder's choice on the night for him. First pitch from Williams. Fastball popped way up in the air. 
It looks like Rybarski's under it. See if he's able to make the catch. He is. So that would be out number two. Yes, yeah, so the wind's definitely blowing in. Uh, you see, I don't know if you can see it, how well the camera is. But you can see Rybarski go back in that ball. I have to come back in up to it. So now two outs, one out away from victory are the Panthers. And Williams and Barfield are discussing maybe signs. But it looks like they'll face Evan Nikowski, the starting pitcher of tonight's game for the Mustangs. One single on the night for him. So Williams set. Pitch. Fastball fouled back into the parking lot. Looks like it hit the hit a car. You can hear it. So 0 1 count after the foul ball. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Williams the pitch. That one in the dirt. Good stop by Barfield. Keeps Roman on first base. Make sure to join us after the game. We'll take a short break and we'll come back for a short pre-game or a post-game segment. Real short. We keep it easy around here. We do want to get home as well. As that ball's hit into right field, looks like he's going to be under it, able to make the catch. Demars is, and now we'll end the ball game. Liberty Hill will advance to a two and two in district play on a 13 to three win over the Marble Falls Mustangs. We will take a one minute break and we'll be back with a short post game segment and then we'll let everybody get on their nights. We'll be right back. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com, and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Welcome back here as we hear some fake victory claps I got in from the sound effects list. Pretty cool find there. As Liberty Hill able to defeat the Mustangs 13-3 in this District 25-5A matchup. As I hinted on earlier, Liberty Hill advanced now to 2-2 two two in district play. They'll play Leander and Georgia next Tuesday, Friday. Watch here. Uh, we will be live 645 sharp. Well, not sharp, but around 645 we'll be live for both of those games at home if you want to Come to the game if you're in Liberty Hill and you not want to travel to Marble Falls. They're both home games next week. Come out, support, be loud. Um, Liberty Hill able to win 13-3 tonight. And some key things of tonight's game is just the bats came alive. You know, I talked about this in the pregame show. My two keys for Liberty Hill tonight were to warm up the bats. They scored 13 runs. I'd say that's a check mark, warming up the bats. And also establish a mound presence. They did. They got CJ, uh, Cole Jefferson started the game, seven strikeouts. Four and a third. I mean, great stats there. Then came in Connor Sherburn, went three or two, went two and two thirds. No, Cole Jefferson went three and a third. Sherburn went two and two thirds. Didn't allow a run. And then Williams came, Williams came in for the last inning there. Three straight outs, and they established a mound presence. I'd give them a check mark there. So two check marks. And you know, my final key for the game. I didn't want to share it. You know, till afterwards. Get back in the win column, and they did. So Panthers now two and two in their district campaign will advance to fourteen and four overall on the season, and they'll look to play Leander and Georgetown at home next Tuesday and Friday. That's about all we got it from Sears Field in Marble Falls. I am Jason Hebner. You've been listening to Liberty Hill Baseball on Vipe Live. We hope to see you next week. Thanks, and have a great rest of your night. <laughs>